If you want to make animated overlays for Ecamm Live without buying any software, then this video is for you. Hello and welcome to Take One Tech. My name's Alec and today we're going to be talking about making overlays and specifically animated overlays for Ecamm Live. And if you are using Ecamm Live then you must be on a Mac and one of the pieces of software that you can get for free on a Mac is Apple's Keynote. Now don't be deceived the fact that it's free. It is actually a very powerful piece of software uh, much like Microsoft PowerPoint. It's a uh, presentation software but the inbuilt animation features that it has in it uh, make it ideal for making overlays for uh, well Ecamm Live or your video editor of choice. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what we're going to be talking about today. There are obviously plenty of other programs specifically for creating animation, uh, animated overlays, uh, animation in video and things like that. Um, but there is a learning curve to those. And so the reason why I use Keynote is it's something that I'm uh, familiar with. And so it's quite easy and straightforward for me to use it. But I also think that if you are starting from zero, then it is also a pretty easy package to pick up and not so complex uh, as some of the other video editing packages. So with that said, let me just now talk about exactly what we mean <laughs> by animated ov overlays, just so that we're all on the same page. So that would be the sort of thing like I had for my title sequence intro. In fact, if I just play that again, you will see that uh, this is uh, obviously an animation and it is over the top of the video. So you can see that as it fades out, it is over the top of the picture. And then just down there, you can see obviously my uh, lower third has just popped in and that is laid over the top of uh, the, the camera feed that you're seeing in Ecamm Live as well. Now I did do a little video which I'll post up into the top corner which was kind of more like an introduction to overlays and the different kinds of overlays that there are in Ecamm but here we're just going to talk about the um, specifically animated overlays and building them in Keynote. So another example of an animated overlay would be something like this where I'm going to be doing sort of top fives, top tens and uh, things like that in my uh, vi in video series in my uh, channel excuse me and so yes having these things just sort of break those videos up and make it clear when you're scrubbing through the video to see where number five four three two one is and so on and so I made these little animations in uh, Keynote and so I thought perhaps a good place to start to uh, show you how to make these animations would be if we actually just went ahead and made one of these uh, one of these animations uh, it's a little bit less complicated than the intro one but I will do a second video about animations on perhaps the uh, sort of more complex animations that you can do in there as well so to start with I'm going to flick over to my screen uh, my share my screen rather and here you can see I've opened up Keynote and it's asking me to choose a theme well we're going to build out our own you could use this, by the way, if you want to get some ideas for overlays. I mean, these are not spe uh, specifically intended to be overlays, but you can still nevertheless get some design ideas from here. They've got plenty of different styles to choose from. And so you might want to use those as a base. However, we're just going to start from scratch and design something ourselves. So we're going to select the blank theme, uh, sorry, the black blank theme. <laughs> uh, but it doesn't really matter the color because we're actually going to make the background transparent. One thing to note before you actually create your uh, uh, image, your file rather, is to make sure that you have the uh, setting here as wide. So that just means it's going to be the same aspect ratio, that 16 by 9 is the called the aspect ratio. That's uh, the ratio of the length to the height of the uh, video. And so that will be basically the same as the output that we've got from our Ecamm Live or like a 1920 by 1080 uh, high definition um, uh, screen. So the other option that you have in there is standard 4x3 and that would be more of sort of uh, square shape. So we're going to use this wide one because I'm actually going to be making a full screen uh, uh, animation and then we'll go down and click on create and that will open up a new file. So it'll be blank like this. Now actually when you open it up if you've only just installed the program it will probably be like this. You won't have any uh, of these inspectors as they're called at the side and so we've just got basically a blank sheet. Uh, now, 
let's have a look first of all at something that we need to do to make sure that the background is transparent and just so that you understand what I mean by that if I flick back over to my main screen and then as I play this uh, thing out let's say we're going to build out the number 10 <laughs> countdown in our uh, example you can see how you can see through that number 10 at, at different times you can see how it uh, starts off as transparent and you can see my face through it and then as it fades back out it zooms out again and you can see through it again. So we need to have that transparency in the video because what we're actually doing in Keynote is we're creating the animation, we're going to export that as a video with that transparency and then we're going to import that into Ecamm Live as an overlay and we want to retain that transparency. Now the way that we do that is quite simple. If I go back over to my screen again in uh, Keynote is if we go to the um, format here we can see that this is the format of the slide that we're looking at. So what we want to do now is we want to go down to uh, here you can see the background and you can see that we've got a color fill. Well we can change that to no fill. Now incidentally what you may want to do if you are going to be creating multiple slides is rather than just change it on that one slide that you're looking at there you could click on this uh, slide uh, edit slide master here and when you click on that you'll see that uh, in fact I've just cropped off the bottom of the screen which is not very helpful for you so let me move that up a bit there we go so now you can see that edit slide master here at the bottom that means that you're editing the actual master slide rather than any one particular slide and there we can go over and change this background to fill and change that to no fill and that now once we click on done will mean that any e extra slides that we add into this uh, will also have that transparency switched on so that's something that's quite important and one thing to note as well is when you look at the slide it looks no different because we've got a black background uh, when we've got the background and if we have uh, no fill it just shows it as um, black as well so it's not easy to see at first glance whether it's transparent or not you do have to come into this format and uh, the background so make sure you check that so that you don't go and export it and then only realize afterwards that you have lost that transparency okay so that's the first point to note now what we're going to do is let's just go and have a look at what we're actually trying to build so let me come back and play that animation again I think it would be useful to just see exactly what the actions are so first of all uh, as you see it come in we've got these two blue panels that move in from the side there is a sort of yellow background that fades in but you can see through the number and that bit's actually a little bit tricky it's it's not hard but it's just something that isn't intuitive inside of Keynote in fact it has to be done outside of Keynote but I'll show you how to do that it's not difficult at all so once the uh, yellow and the number has faded in you can see that there's also like a, a sort of building out animation of that number some sort of little animation of as the number appears and then after it's stayed on screen for a, a second or two then you can see that there's then another uh, animation as the side panels the blue panels move out to the side and then the number sort of zooms back out and then fades out into uh, into nothingness so that is what we're trying to achieve so let's go back to my screen share and I'll show you how we're going to do that. So we've got a uh, text here. If these, if this was blank, then we could simply just go up to here to add some text. But seeing how we've got it there, let's just click in this and we're going to do the number 10, let's say. Let's uh, take this one out because we don't need that. We've only got one number. And now let's uh, just resize this a little bit. I'm just going to bring the uh, edges in just so that it's a bit easier to manage with. So we'll move that there and you can see how it, as I move it into the center of the screen, it will notify us, it will show us where we're on the center. So now that's dead centered in the screen. It's a little bit small though. So let's go over and adjust the text size. So we'll just go into style and then we'll go into text in this top little panel. And once again, there are different panels that you can have in here. So there's either the format palette, the animate or document. So if I switch between those, you can see that these all change down below. So we want to make sure that we're in the format because we're changing the formatting. <laughs> so there we go. We've got the uh, the font picker and the text size. So let's just make that. Let's try 700. Is that going to be a bit too big? Might have to resize the box. Uh, there we go. Uh, it still looks a little bit on the small side, perhaps. So I'll try and change that again. Let's make that uh, 900. 
there we go that we'll have that like that and i'm just going to change the font because the font i've been using is this one in fact is it maybe not let's leave it like that then <laughs> uh, it doesn't really matter for this demonstration so there we go we've got our, our number and let's just center that in the uh, the middle again uh, right now what you'll notice actually is although the the sort of bounding box of the text is centered on the page you can see that the text itself is actually slightly lower down so although that looks to be centered because we've got that little horizontal yellow line showing up it isn't actually centered in terms of the text itself so I'm just going to move that up slightly uh, now the color of that that I had was that blue color wasn't it for the same color as the rest of our, my sort of theme if you like for all of my overlay overlays uh, which by the way is another important point you know if you are going to have a sort of uh, create overlays and things like that for your videos it's always good to try and have some sort of consistent theme running through the uh, running through them all basically consistent with your your brand as well uh, so now we need going to change the color uh, now one thing to note about changing the color if you're on the text and you see st you're in the style page up here then you might see this fill and think that that is what you need to do to change the color but actually changing this will just change the the fill color of the the bounding box that's containing that text so that's not the one we want we want to actually go to the uh, rather than the uh, fill here let's change that back to no fill we want to be in the text tab and then I'm going to change that to this should bring up the color picker I'm going to change that to uh, this one now next thing we need to add is we want to add in our uh, background color because we've got that um, uh, yellow color now if I just zoom out a little bit which is command shift and the uh, sort of less than sign <laughs> will zoom out so if I zoom out there and what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to add a oops a shape into the background there we go that one so I'm going to add a rectangle and if I just pop that up into the top corner and drag it down until it's covering the page that should be about covering all of the page it doesn't actually matter if you go outside to be honest so it's better that you don't have any gaps around the edge uh, so it doesn't matter if you go outside because when you export it as video it'll only export what is in the actual window itself uh, the, the, the actual frame rather of the uh, uh, the slide so now I'm going to change the color of this one. So now we don't want text color because this is obviously a shape. So we want to go back to the style again. And I'm going to change that to uh, the yellow color that I use. Now what you'll see is that uh, obviously we've got the text behind the yellow, which is not what we want. A simple way to change that, if I just come out of here, is to right click and then you can click send to back. And then that will move that thing to the back another way that you can arrange things when you start having more complex uh, compositions with more layers in is if you go up to the view menu and then what we want to do is go to show uh, one second where has it gone now it's somewhere in here uh, show object list that's the one I knew it was there somewhere so what that will do is it will show you the things that you've got so we've got the number and we've got the rectangle and it's useful to have this down the side because it means that you can just flick between things even if you can't see them because sometimes with more complicated animations you may have things that are sort of hidden from view when you're working on it so you want to be able to select them now these are quite obviously quite clear what they are but it's also possible to name these things so it is a good thing to get into the habit of naming them again not so much with simple things like this but when you start making things that are more complex it makes it easy to see the objects that you're looking at so that's obviously quite uh, obvious that that's the <laughs> yellow rectangle the next shape that I'm going to add in is those sort of triangular sections that come in from the side and the easiest way to do those is actually just to scroll down here just grab one of these shapes and make sure it is as high as the uh, as tall as the uh, the frame and then we can just move it out of the way we've got there our shape we don't need to spend the time to actually draw it exactly to the shape we need it because this does the job perfectly well and the bit that's off the screen you don't see anyway so next I'm going to change the color of that to be our sort of blue is it blue is it green bluey green I'm not sure but <laughs> that uh, that color anyway and then I'm going to move copy another one of those so by the way just so that you know I'm pressing down alt 
on the keyboard and dragging and it will make a copy of that so anytime you hold down the alt and drag it will uh, or the option it will um, uh, duplicate the the shape so there we go that is something like we've got in that animated overlay that I showed you now there is actually a uh, another little problem that we've got here because if we have a look at that animation once again you'll see that uh, the number in the middle is transparent at some point and in fact although we can make items transparent I could click in the uh, let me go back here so you can see what I'm doing I could click in this number and I could go to the uh, the color fill and I could select the color and then I could change the transparency of it so as you can see I'm fading it out because it is becoming more and more transparent but if I make that transparent we've still got the yellow background behind it and one thing that you cannot do in uh, Keynote as yet is do a, uh, a it's called a layer mask and actually it's an inverse mask because what we need to do is we want to tell the yellow uh, background to have a gap <laughs> essentially where this uh, this the number 10 is what you can do in here in terms of masking is you can create a shape so I could create uh, any shape like this and I could actually take a photograph and drop it into that shape and it would automatically mask the photograph to be that shape so that's great for you know an overlay for example a static overlay where maybe I don't know you want to have your picture in or you know whatever it is related to your your channel or whatever you're producing and you want to uh, fix that into a particular shape you can do that that way uh, but you can't say that I want to sort of cut this shape out from what's behind it you can't do that uh, reversing of the uh, the mask like you could in something like Photoshop or something like that so there is a little way that we can get around this though and first of all what we need to do is we actually need to make a image of the background with that number 10 missing from it and there's an easy way that you can do that again which is free and what I'll need to do for this though I should have probably done this before adding in these two shapes if I just move those out of the way slightly because we don't want those getting in the way what I'm going to do now is I'm going to export this as an image so the way we do that is we go to uh, file uh, export uh, export to uh, image and we want to just we've only got one slide if you had multiple slides you would select the specific slide that you had and we want to create an image and specifically it needs to be a PNG file because PNGs you can have a transparency whereas you can't with uh, JPEGs so we'll select PNG and uh, we don't need to worry about that because we haven't got actually got any transparency in there just yet we would use that if we did have some transparency uh, so first of all we just need to export this and so I'm just going to export this now to uh, I should have a little pop-up that's come so if I just drop that into my uh, desktop rather and I'll just call that uh, 10 <laughs> simple so I'll export that as number 10 and now what I can do is I can open that up in preview if I come over to my desktop it's uh, right on the other side of one of my other screens here uh, so if I open that up in preview one second and I shall drag it across over onto your visible screen uh, okay so there we go that is now opened up in the preview window make that a little bit smaller so that you can see it properly and so what we want to do is we want to tell it to get rid of this number 10 so that we can see through it and there is actually a simple tool that we can use to do that which is in the markup tools at the top here so this is just preview when you when you download the uh, or export the picture rather when you open it open it in Apple's preview uh, you may have something else set as a default but uh, preview is the default if you're just on a Mac and haven't set, selected otherwise so then we got to here and it's this little instant alpha so alpha is basically the transparency so you'll sometimes see if you look for um, images on the web for example if you search for alpha uh, Im images with transparency then you can uh, you can find ones that have have got transparency in them but we're going to do it ourselves so we're going to uh, click in the uh, in the place that we want to make transparent and then I'm holding down the mouse button and I'm going to drag and you can see how it sort of shaded that area red that is the area that it will make transparent now if you've got sort of more complicated things where you haven't got something that's quite so uh, strikingly 
uh, different between the two colors. You may need to click and hold and drag until it highlights all of the area that you want to um, uh, remove. And if I keep dragging with my button, my finger still on the mouse, it does actually select the whole uh, area. So basically, the amount that you drag is kind of, I suppose, like the sensitivity of what it's going to actually uh, remove. So there we go. I've highlighted the number one. And if I just press delete now, it's actually removed that and it looks black behind but that's actually just the background of the window because it is now transparent so if I do the same on the other one like that then we've now got a picture of a yellow background with a transparent number 10 so now I'm going to close this one down and save it and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this image into my presentation so I'll just drop that in there so now we've got a uh, number 10 in there. And if I just move it around like this, you can see how it's, uh, it's the number 10 with a transparency in it. So now that I've got that in there, I actually don't need this rectangle anymore. So I'm just going to delete it for the purposes of this particular animation at least. So we've got in our, our viewer at the side, you can see we've got our number 10 background. And we've got, in fact, let's just call this. It's obvious what it is, isn't it? But let's just at least uh, put it like this because you'll see when we come to do the animations, it will make it more obvious exactly what it is. And then we've got our two parallelograms here. So now can you see how that's behind it? And before I showed you how you can uh, do center front or center back. So you can also um, move them forwards or backwards or things like that. But actually, if you've got this view open at the side, this is also the order as they are stacked up, if you like, as layers on the image. So we can just drag this down here because we want this right at the back. And then now you can see it's disappeared behind this, uh, this parallelogram because that is now on the very bottom of the stack, which is where we want it. So now I'll drag this other parallelogram in from the other side, just like that, and get it about where we want it. And what we could do as well is just so that it's clear which one's which, We've just got them both called the same because it's just the, the, the default name given to that particular shape. So let's call this one uh, left. And then let's call this one right because now it will be very clear when we come to do our animation, uh, which one is which. So the first thing that we're going to do is begin by uh, just bringing in the uh, doing the sort of the intro part of the animation now the animation is all done again using a palette up at the top so we're going to change from the format to the animate palette so if I click on that one now now we have got a, uh, a different set of controls here and we're going to use this to add different effects now if I click on a particular shape what we've got is basically there are three types of effect that we can add or groups of effects. They're either building in transitions. So something that's going to bring that shape from uh, from out of the scene into the scene. Uh, then we've got an action that can be performed on it whilst it is in the scene. And then we've got a build out. So you can only have one build in transition per um, particular uh, object that you've got in your file. Uh, you can only have one build out because it can only obviously come in once and go out once, but you can have multiple uh, actions in the scene itself. So we'll come on to some of the actions that you do within the scene when I do the second video, which is about a bit more, uh, slightly more complex uh, animations. But for now, uh, we only need to build this in and then build it out. So if you think about the animation that we had before, I'll just show you what we need to do first. I'll just come over to that one. And you can see that what's going to happen is we need those two sides to come in. We need the yellow background to fade in. And we've got that little animation of the uh, number actually building out as well. So let's have a little look at how we do that. So let's do the number first because that one looked probably looked the most complex, didn't it? But in actual fact, it's just as easy as all of the other parts because what I'm going to do now is I'm going to, having selected the number, you can see I've selected the number there and you can see it's selected from this side as well. Just click on add an effect. When you click on add an effect, you've got all of these different types of uh, effects that you can use. And if you click preview, it will show you what it's going to do. So that one just appears, that's a bit boring. You could have something blurring in or compressing 
there's all these different effects so go through and have a look and play around and you'll get an idea of what those all do but what we're going to do here is actually one there's some by the way that are specific to text that you might not get with other ones so I think that some of these ones where the text sort of drops in from above um, some of them are a little bit cheesy <laughs> uh, and so we don't want to go overboard with animations you can uh, get carried away with seeing all of these different things you can do and uh, yeah it's very easy to get carried away maybe I have already who knows you can let me know in the comments if you think that I've gone a bit too far with any of mine uh, but I'm going to use this one so it's just a simple function that is built in so there's no uh, sort of extra work required and it just has this effect of building out the uh, the number in that way and i think that looks quite nice without being too over the top so we can preview it here by uh, clicking on the uh, button on the side but then we can just when we've decided that's the one we want we just click on it like that and it then appears this then opens up this window which has a few extra controls so we can control things like the uh, the speed of it so if I want to make it a bit quicker which I think I do because it's uh, taking two seconds is probably a bit long so let's change that to one second and preview so there we go you can see how long that takes to build out and then you can also change the uh, direction of it as well if you want preview that in fact I don't think that does a huge amount for that one maybe if it had more text it would but in any case um, so that is the first animation and then we also want that background to uh, fade in and the uh, the side panels to move in so let's do the side panels first and I'm going to do again just add an effect and these ones we want them to move in from the side so that one is doing what we wanted straight out of the box let's click that uh, I want to make that a little bit quicker so I'll make that half a second instead of a second and then uh, this bounce thing is just to do with uh, when it finishes its move or when it starts its move uh, you'll see it better on the move out actually but it just has a bit of a sort of bounce in the opposite direction before it moves so I'm going to take that off for this one and then here we're going to do the same move in but what you'll see here is it's moving in from the opposite side whereas I want this to move in uh, rather than left to right I want it like right to left so now you can see that that is moving in next we are going to oh, take that bounce off next we're going to have the background move in as well and what we want to do for that is i just want that to fade in so here we have an action called uh, dissolve and that is basically just it just fades in which is what we want so i'm going to select that and change the time to half a second and then now what we can see is if i go and sort of preview this in fact let me just bring up another window which help with this if I uh, go to window uh, sorry view beg your pardon and then if we go to uh, one second ah there we go it's uh, it's already shown that's why I'm having difficulty looking for it it's shown somewhere on my desktop but I can't quite see where it is one second build order uh, ah there it is <laughs> it was hiding underneath so um, in a similar way to the the way we've got the layers down the side then this one is the build order now what I'll do is I'll just uh, I'll hide this one down the side here this is just the slide so if you've got multiple slides they'll appear here but we're only using one at the moment so I can change that from here to slide only and then I'll just drag this over this way a little bit so then we can put the build order because this is basically the order of things happening in the animation itself so this is going to be useful in terms of setting up our uh, our animation a little bit better because what you'll see is if I preview the whole animation so in the same way before that we could preview for individual components of the animation here I can preview for the whole thing and what you'll see is it does one bit then it does the next bit and then it does the next bit <laughs> which is not what we want we want it all to happen together now what you can do is when you select a uh, any part of the animation can you see also here the reason why it's useful to name your uh, objects in the left hand column because then when you create your animation the name will be here as well so it just makes it easier to see which part you're looking at if you have got them all uh, properly named so uh, what we want to do is we've got the first bit here which is the number 10 that's all fine I've set the time of it and everything's okay with that but this one here we want it to happen at the same time well down at the bottom you can see that we have this uh, action start 
and at the moment it's set to on click now what that means is if you were doing this in a presentation using keynote as a presentation software which is what it's intended for then you would have liked a, a little clicker or do it with a mouse click to move to uh, the next slide or in this case to the next part of the animation well what we want is we want this to all happen uh, with the previous action so I can click in here and change that to with build one. So each of these steps, by the way, is called a build. So you can see they're numbered build one, two, three, and four. And so we want build two to happen with build one. And similarly, number three, we want that to happen with build one as well. We could have it to start immediately after number two, uh, but we want it to happen instead of on click, but we want it to happen with build uh, one and the same for that background. So now we've got all of those happening together. And so if I preview that, you can see that everything is happening together. Now, don't be put off by the fact that we seem to have some black in the background, because bear in mind that anything that you're seeing as black at the moment uh, will actually be transparent when we export the video. So that should all work as we want it to. Now, the next thing we want to do, having had everything build in, is we then want it to wait a little bit and then all build out. And basically, as it builds out, it's going to do more or less the same as it did to build in. I'm just checking to make sure I've got the uh, right things here. So the first one we want to do is we want to build uh, out that background. So we've already got the build in action, but now I'm going to click on to build out and add an effect. And I basically want that to just fade away much as it appeared in the first place. Uh, in fact, this should be the uh, number that I'm talking about because that's the one that I want to fade out. So let's uh, build out that one. And I'm going to have that to uh, dissolve like this, because if you remember from the animation, it uh, the number fades away so it becomes transparent and then the whole uh, number uh, zooms towards us. So let's just have a, another quick look. Sorry to keep going back to this. I hope it just makes it a lot easier to understand what we're trying to achieve. So you saw the last little part there, that number five came sort of zooming out of the screen. So that's what I'm going to replicate uh, now in my uh, in my animation. So we've got the uh, the dissolve for the number. And again, on the timing, I'm just going to put that as half a second. In fact, that one's going to be a second. I'm going to have the others move out a little bit quicker. So next, we want to do the left and right, and we want those to move out. So let's build out, add an effect, move out like that. And can you see that little sort of jump it does before it starts to move out? Uh, that was the uh, bounce thing that I was mentioning earlier. So I'm going to take that off. And then the next one we're going to do is the left side and build out, add an effect, move out again. And we want that to go the other way. So we'll change that right to left. Notice how you can also have it going any which way you want, up, top to bottom, left, right, whichever. Uh, so you could have it going down or wherever. But obviously I'm using right to left. Take that bounce off. I'm going to drop the time of those down a little bit, 0 0.3 seconds, 0 0.3 seconds. These may not sound like long times in terms of, you know, talking about fractions of a second, but when you start getting into more complicated animations, uh, just bear in mind, you don't want things to take too long. We're not uh, <laughs> trying to create a feature length animation. So there's a balance between having some level of action and activity and, uh, and overdoing it, I think. So, uh, these ones we want to all happen together as well. So I'm going to have the right happen with that dissolving of the number. So with build number five, with build number five as well. And then the last one is that we're going to have that zooming effect. So I'm going to just add in here a uh, build out. And this is actually something which is called uh, scale. So you can see that is basically just scaling slightly before disappearing. So it's scaling and fading at the same time. Uh, again, play around with these. There's other slightly different scaling one that's even bigger, uh, but you can play around with those and see which ones you like. And again, on the timing, I'm just gonna have that so that it's happening. Uh, second with the other things, if I change that to one second here. Uh, so basically the number and the actual scaling thing happen in a second, whereas the other two happen slightly slower than, uh, slightly quicker than that. And the background zoom feature we want to happen with build five as well. Now the part that I've missed out is the start time of this build here, because we want this to happen after the background, 
but we actually want them to be a delay because we want it to stay on screen for a certain amount of time. So here we'll click on start after build for, and then we're just going to put a delay in here of, uh, let's say 1.5 seconds. And now if I play the whole thing, what you'll see is we've pretty much got something that looks like what you saw earlier. Now the only thing is I just noticed there, yeah, those two didn't quite come in at the same speed. So I'm just going to change that to 0.5 seconds as well. And now it should look a little bit more balanced when those two slide in. And that is our animation created. So the next thing we need to do is get that into Ecamm Live. And so what we need to do is we need to export that as a movie. So just as we did with an image, we'll go to uh, File in the top here, uh, File, Export to, and then we should have uh, Movie. So click on Movie. Now I'm just going to change this because when you start uh, Keynote as a default, what you'll find in the movie settings is down here at the bottom, you have a uh, compression type H264. And that's fine for most things. However, you can't have a transparent background using that setting. So one thing we need to make sure we change is this one. This is the most important thing to get right in terms of this video. Otherwise, the whole transparency won't work. And just come down and select this one, the Apple ProRes 4444. So we click on that one and now you can see that we can toggle this one on and off and we want to export with transparency. So leave that checkbox on. In terms of the uh, resolution, I'm using 1920 by 1080, which is the same as the video uh, in, that I'm using in uh, Ecamm. And then also the frame rate, 30 frames per second, but you can change that to whatever frame rate you want to match your settings. Just coming back up to the top, there is a couple of other settings to be aware of. Uh, we do want this self-playing because we want obviously all of those animations to play on their own. Uh, we also want uh, the slides. We've only got one slide, so it doesn't matter that we've got uh, all selected. But bear in mind, if you were making multiple different videos within the same file, each on its own sort of slide, um, then you would want to make sure you specify the exact slide that you want to export. The next uh, two components are uh, go to next slide after. So that would be if you were, did have a series of slides, you could have a pause built in for the transitions between slides. Um, bearing in mind that the whole use of this software is intended for creating presentations. And so you can see how you might want to, if you created a presentation in Keynote and you wanted to export that as a video to play as a presentation, then you might want to build in these sort of pauses between flicking from one uh, information slide to the next. Similarly, if you've got multiple builds where normally you would operate them with a clicker of some form or a mouse click, then you can actually build that into here as well. Now we don't need any of that because we've set all of our timings up exactly as we want. So the only thing to bear in mind is this last one here, go to next build after or go to next slide after rather, um, will mean that once the animation has finished playing, it will pause for that many seconds before going on to the next slide. Or in our case, as we only have one slide, before ending the video. So we want that set to zero because we want our animation, our video animation, to finish at the time that our <laughs> animated sequence finishes. So if we just set both of those to zero, that's the last thing we need to do. So just to recap, check in that you've got these to zero and also make sure you have this one set with transparent backgrounds. And now we'll export that. So click OK or next. And then we'll just call that uh, 10 as well. <laughs> and there we go for this example, that's fine. Now I'm saving these to my desktop just for this demonstration. Uh, but one thing to bear in mind is when you actually come to import these from into Ecamm Live, which I'll show you shortly, is the path to the video is where Ecamm Live is going to look for that overlay anytime it needs to use it. So it's good to have a folder on your computer somewhere where you keep all of your animated overlays and you always know that that's where they are and Ecamm will always just point to that location. If I put this file on my desktop and then I go and move it somewhere else, the link with Ecamm will be lost. It won't sort of track where it's being moved to. So it's important to make sure you always keep your uh, resources <laughs> and uh, assets and things like that for your uh, productions 
in a, a sort of organized manner and somewhere where you always know where they are and where you're not likely to accidentally move them, uh, tidy them up or anything like that. And uh, yeah, definitely best not keep them all on your desktop. But since I use my desktop as kind of my desktop <laughs> working space, so it's just sort of things that I'm doing uh, generally day to day, then I'm putting it there for the moment, just temporarily while I give you this demonstration. So if I uh, come over to my Ecamm Live, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to move my whole Ecamm Live uh, setup. I've got it on my large monitor and I want to move it somewhere where it's going to be easier for you to see. So uh, just bear with me while I do this. By the way, I make all of these videos, uh, as you can tell, <laughs> with no uh, editing and I do them all sort of like on the fly uh, as I go along. So it means that there's points in them like this where I'm sort of tidying stuff up and I'll be really interested to know what you think about these sort of videos. Do you think that it is better to have um, heavily edited all of the gaps and things like that moved, sort of faster paced videos, or is it okay to have some little bits like this where people are <laughs> just actually showing you the reality of getting things done? Be really interested to hear. Uh, I'm fingers crossed I don't have to do much editing because it's not something I enjoy, but there we go. Be really interested to hear about that. So in incidentally, uh, that would be a great point, wouldn't it? To say, if you have got any comments, uh, and you've liked what you've seen so far, then don't forget to ask any questions, leave any comments in the uh, box below. And then also don't forget to give it a like and subscribe. I'll be making a whole series of videos specifically about Ecamm. I've already made a few and I'll be making some more because it is a piece of software that I'm using quite heavily at the moment for not just this channel, but for some other production work that I'm doing as well. So uh, yeah, it'd be if you're interested in this sort of content, then click that subscribe button and uh, you'll get notified whenever I make any more. Have you done it yet? You're back, great, excellent. <laughs> so that was a bit cheesy, wasn't it? So anyway, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna show you my whole uh, screen. One second, I've gotta find the right button on my stream deck. I moved it around earlier and that has meant that I've forgotten exactly where it is. So now you can see in my uh, uh, stream uh, this is in my ecamm live you can see i've got my scenes down one side and i've i've actually made mine all as uh, my countdown timers here all as uh, individual scenes and that's not necessarily the only way to do it there is another way but i shall uh, i shall explain why a little bit later so what i'm going to show you now is how do we get our scene overlay into ecamm live and it's really easy <laughs> it's not difficult at all so let me just take, this is my main view. I'm just going to duplicate this one because it's just a simple scene with a, uh, whoops, don't want to do that one. Let me just take that one off. I'll do my main scene, beg your pardon. So I'll take this one and I'll just drag this down here. So I'm just going to work with this one. And I'll stick this at the bottom down here. Uh, right, so what we want to do is we've got a scene with my camera and image in, and what we want to do is we want to put that overlay over the top of it. Um, I've done another video specifically about overlays, but just to recap in case you haven't seen that, in the overlays window, which by the way is um, uh, this toggle here, and that basically shows and hides that window. And so if we show that window, then what you can see is down at the, uh, the bottom, you've got different kinds of overlays so we've got either uh, picture overlays video animated overlays which is the one we're going to use text overlays which are things like if you want to add in some text so like if i wanted to add in uh, things like my uh, website link which might be a good place to drop that one in it's a bit of a cheeky uh, cheeky excuse really to do that isn't it <laughs> uh, so yeah my uh, my website is take one tech.io and that is basically just a um, text overlay then we've got a countdown if and I use that one in my live stream. So it just sort of counts down to when the start of the live stream is. I've got some widget overlays, which are um, basically you can link to things like. Um, oh, Siri's just decided to activate herself for some reason. Beg your pardon. Uh, so widget overlays are things like uh, this one. I could put my buy me a coffee link. So that is that's the background that I made. But this link over the top here, you can see. Uh, if I just come out of um, demo mode, 
this is a uh, link at the bottom that support me at buymeacoffee.com slash take one tech is just an HTML uh, piece of code that goes in there from buy me a coffee and it puts that widget into the bottom corner of the screen and in fact if I was on a live stream as well and uh, somebody did actually go to buy me a coffee and bought me a coffee because my coffee cup's empty <laughs> uh, then uh, that would pop up over the top of the screen there as well so uh, that is uh, another type of overlay. So if I just come back into the demo mode a second, I'll take that one away now. And we've also got uh, a folder that you can add. Oh, sorry, beg your pardon. There's also camera overlay, so you can add other camera feeds over the top of the screen. And then we've got folders so that you can organize them. So I just sort of tend to uh, group things together and make it a bit easier to sort of navigate around. But in any case, what we're looking to do is add a video overlay. So I'm going to go down to the bottom and click on this one that looks like a little uh, uh, picture with the whoosh marks <laughs> behind it. So I'm going to click on that and that will bring me up. Uh, that's actually my desktop. So there we go. That is the movie that we made. So I'll click on open. And you can see it's actually just dropped it in automatically at the right size. And what we need to do now is we just need to check here this little play button sometimes you've got these other so i've got a control here for the camera that i'm looking at and then i've got some other controls but this one with the play button that's actually the uh, the play button for that movie because bear in mind that overlay is just simply a movie there's some different actions that you can have on that so you can make sure it's selected to auto play uh, because in this case what we're doing is building this out as a scene so that when it comes to this scene it plays automatically uh, but then when it finishes there's some different options such as uh, hide it but we've built in the hidden feature really because it actually hides as part of the video uh, so otherwise it would stay on the, the sort of last scene of it uh, or we could loop it if it's something you just want running continuously as a sort of something in the corner, a little animated logo or something like that. You could uh, select that to loop and it would just constantly be looping in the bottom corner. But we're going to select uh, do nothing. Now what we've done is we've got this scene. Uh, so here I'll just call that uh, countdown 10. And what you'll see is if I just flick back to uh, my main scene, which looks exactly the same, <laughs> you won't notice any different, but uh, we don't have the countdown in there. If I click onto the main scene now, double click, then what should happen is, uh, one second, ah, I changed it from autoplay. <laughs> that had me stumped there for a moment. So. Remember I said don't forget to make sure you have autoplay checked. Then uh, I must have unchecked that by mistake. So let me try that again. This is where editing would come in really useful, isn't it? So I'm going to go down here and I'll dub double click on the, uh, the countdown. And now there you go. It comes in automatically. So <clears throat> the reason why I have these set up. So if I, you can see now in my, uh, my scenes down the, this, this side here. You can see that I can sort of flick between them and I can scroll between them. I actually have these all linked on my uh, stream deck. So I did a whole video about how I use my stream deck with Ecamm Live. So I'll, I'll link to that in the top corner. But basically I have buttons assigned to each of these scenes and uh, that's how I, I go between them. One thing you could do is rather than have a scene where the, uh, the number, the, the animation plays automatically as part of the scene, I could equally just have them set up as an overlay because what you'll see is if I go back to that scene in fact you can see that that overlay is just in my list here uh, and it's set to play with that uh, that scene but one thing I could do is I could just do much like I'd done uh, with the that buy me a coffee link for example you could just have the the overlay being acted activated by Stream Deck, so it would play that video whenever you press the button. And that might be more appropriate for if you're just wanting to do something like, for example, uh, you know, a don't forget to like and subscribe thing over the top, but you just want it to play over the top because that way you could have it play in any scene. In fact, that's much like I've got with, if I come out of my demo mode a second, you can see that I've got that one and then I've also got my, uh, like my lower third, for example, so I can activate that overlay from any particular place. So what's the reason why I have them set up on individual scenes? Well, that's because for this use case, these are sort of countdowns and I actually always want it to revert to 
the uh, the full frame shot. So basically, if I demo a piece of software or something like that, and then I want to go on to the next piece, then when I press the, the countdown, I want it to come back to the full on shot of me. I've made a video all about how you can use Stream Deck to activate these overlays and scenes. So I'll leave a link to that up in the top corner. But in the meantime, if you have found this video useful, then please do go and leave any comments down in the uh, box below. And don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. And then, yeah, I shall be posting the next video about doing some slightly more advanced uh, animations in Ecamm Live shortly. I've got a whole series, as I say, about Ecamm Live specifically and another whole series about Stream Deck, how you can use those in other areas of your uh, work and life as well. But for the time being, I hope you found that useful and don't forget to check out those other videos up there and I'll see you in the next one. Have a great day, everyone.